look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 In hindsight You make mistakes, we're learning from this In hindsight be your today and your tomorrow In hindsight It's so much clearer now have you ever wondered how significant lifestyle changes can drastically improve your health and reshape your life? Today, I have Blackamore Hampton, a remarkable individual who lost 60 pounds in 60 days, reversing his hypertension and prediabetes without medication. He's also an accomplished author and mentor in health and fitness and financial literacy. Welcome, Blackamore, to Hindsight the Podcast. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing all right this morning. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty yeah, good. It's a, go. it, it's a good day. I woke up with with less pains. Um, that's, that's always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm pre- feeling pretty good. Uh, where are you calling in from today? I'm in L.A., Los Angeles, California. Oh, you're right up the street. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Maybe okay. we could have did it in person. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, maybe we'll do a part two, but I'm not going to do no workouts with you. But maybe. <laughs> Maybe we could do a part two in person. That, that'd be kind of awesome. Hey, so I, I gave a real brief description of you, right? So could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm from, born in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Yes, there's black people there. Um, there's, <laughs> there's two, to my knowledge at least, there's two cities there that are more populated, which is Omaha and Lincoln. Lincoln bl- is the... I'm glad you said that. I thought you could say, to your knowledge, there's two black people there. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> now, where I'm from is where all the black people are. You got Lincoln. Lincoln is a college town, so our yeah. most athletic black people go there, along with right. other athletes, Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Omaha, on the north side, where I'm from is where most of us is at. Then yeah. down south is where the Hispanics is at. And then everybody else is everywhere else. Um, from there... I moved to Atlanta for a few years. That's where mm-hmm. I gained most of my weight at and went through a whole bunch of life transitions and things like that. Came back to Omaha. Then I came out here a few years later. In the midst of all that moving around, um, I started off like investing in stocks, right? So when okay. I was younger, when I was about seven years old, maybe, my family used to get together and have these talks and these meetings and how they was going to get rich. And this is what rich people do. And this is what the rich white people do and stuff like that. And I remember one day my uncle said something about, yeah, if you just put your money in a stock and you go away for some years and come back, you may be rich. And that memory just stayed in my mind. Yeah. So as I became an adult, the memory just randomly surfaced, I guess, one day. And this is after Google came out. So you can look up (laughs) anything you want. I looked up how to research in stocks. Long story short, I had some success in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Had years of losses and losses and losses and losses. Learned the hard way what I was supposed to do the first time. And then I said, I don't want nobody to go through what I went through, which yeah. prompted me to write my book, Everything You Need to Know About Stocks. And in those financial roller coasters, along with moving around, and, and then eventually I had my first child, mm-hmm. I put on a bunch of weight. Mm. And my blood pressure had got high. And I was. You know, as I'm getting as I'm getting like in my mid to late twenties, my peers is starting to die from other things that's not gang related or car accidents. It's health issues now, which was new to me. Right. And that was happening a lot. And now I'm seeing that my blood pressure was high. And I just had my first child. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. If they're dying already, <laughs> and in my mind they're healthier than me and more fit than me, I don't stand yeah. a chance to I'll be gone before she graduated high school. Yeah. And that's what ultimately made me um, you know, it, that that's when the 60 pounds in 60 days happened. Before that, mm. I was, before that, I was trying to lose weight for almost five years. And during yeah. those five years, I gained 50 pounds. So technically, it took me five years to lose 10 pounds uh. if, we, if we zoom out. <laughs> <laughs> that's some hindsight right there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I hope they answered your question. I know I kind of gave a whole biography, but yeah. No, that's fine. My, you know, my one question <laughs> My follow up question was going to be what motivated you to start your weight loss journey. You kind of you you said your your child, right, was one of the big factors. Um, And you also said, you know, just seeing some of your classmates or people you grew up with dying from diseases and stuff uh, related to health choices or life Mm -hmm. choices. Right. So when did you know, like, okay, I'm out of weight? Did you go to the doctor and they said, hey, you got prediabetes and, and all of these different things? Like what? 
was the ingredients that really led you to start thinking about your child and being in their life? Yeah, so growing up, my dad wasn't around as much as I would have liked him to be. Yeah. And that was the case for like me and a lot of my homies. So we all kind of had like this unwritten rule that we was going to repeat history. Right. Um, and I remember I was 19. I just got out of high school. I'm skinny, skinnier then than I am now. And a doctor was already telling me I had higher cholesterol. Oh. Wasn't enough to necessarily put me on medication yet. Mm-hmm. But 19 with high cholesterol and skinny is crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? That's hereditary. So, yeah. But, you know, it's not, it don't mean nothing to me. I'm a 19-year-old kid. Diseases don't happen to me, blah, blah, blah. And plus, I'm of the mindset that um, you're kind of just destined to be fat or skinny. You're destined to have these diseases mm. and not... And that's just the way it is. I remember my grandma, she had high blood pressure and I just processed it as that was just meant for her. And I was always told how I was lucky because I could eat anything and not gain weight because I did, you know. Right, right. (laughs) I used to eat crazy. For a while. It'll (laughs) catch up. But yeah, yeah. So, okay, I had high cholesterol at 19. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, I get into my mid to late 20s. -hmm. I'm seeing, I'm going to funerals funerals of, of the elders but then i'm like meeting cousins and stuff and mm-hmm. in my mind they're healthier than me they're fitter than me at the time and then mm-hmm. i hear oh you know such and such you met the funeral they died oh you know such and such they died they passed and <clears throat> the one that probably was the most real to me was my siblings dad in my mind he was very clever and witty and smart yeah. he had a stroke and i seen this stroke i, I mm-hmm. seen it in person mm-hmm. so um, seeing that happen made it very, very, very real to me yeah. as far as health, but I didn't have my own health issues that necessarily at the time. I knew about the cholesterol thing, but that was years ago anyway, and I wasn't even necessarily fat yet. And as we fast forward and I'm in Atlanta and I got access to restaurants I don't have in Omaha, Nebraska, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they open 24 seven and right down the street, <laughs> I was having myself a time. Right. <laughs> So, but my but a friend that I was staying there with, he had high blood pressure, and he was kind of a bigger guy at the time, mm-hmm. and he was the first person that I realized after a while didn't have to be on blood pressure medicine anymore because he changed how he ate. Everybody else I knew was on blood blood pressure medicine their whole life, and their mm-hmm. feet was always swelling up, and they always talked mm-hmm. about how they had to eat less salt. But I was like, "What's the medicine doing?" Um, and I seen him actually get off of it. He would go to Arby's and order apple slices instead of the curly mm, fries. I used to tease right. him for it at the time. Yeah. And he had a blood pressure machine at the house. And I remember he was like, all right, all right, Black, you've been going to the Waffle House a lot. Let's see. You put on some weight since you got down here. What's your blood pressure looking like? And he mm. told me what the numbers were supposed to be. I wanted He wanted it to be 120 over 80 and stuff like that. Oh, that's what's up. And so we do it. And the, the machine do the thing. And they do the numbers. And it says 140-something over 90-something. And he's screaming, mm. oh, my God. Lord, boy, your blood pressure highs? I don't know what. So I call my mom. I tell her the numbers. Like, is he dragging it out or is this really bad? She do the same thing. Woo, oh, my God, your blood pressure highs. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember her saying the words, that's stroke territory. Yeah. And that's when my siblings did. He had the stroke. So that's when it kind of hit me. So it kind of hit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I first started trying to lose weight. And I will lose 10 pounds, gain 12 pounds a couple months later. Lose another mm. 10 pounds, gain another 15 pounds. And that's when I was stuck in this cycle for almost five years. Yeah. And I come back home. I have my first child. And I get my blood pressure checked again. This is the biggest I ever been. I'm like 270 pounds at this time. My blood okay. pressure says 170 something over 100 something. And my mom just had like this real heart to heart and said, you need to get it together. You just have yeah. a daughter. You can't be playing. You take your health serious. Your dad got mm. high blood pressure. We both got diabetes. It runs on both sides of the family. You know, yeah. you need to go to the doctor tomorrow. In the meantime, take an aspirin. That's like a natural blood thinner. Drink plenty of water. She's giving me these because she's a nurse. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I think that was really the moment. And the very next day, because the day I found that out was April 11, 2017. The very next day, I go on a three-day water fast. I don't eat no food. I just drink water and study. I look up all the nutrition stuff I could find. I'm looking at all these transformational stories Uh to figure out how I can do this and not have to be on medicine. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, long story long. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'm writing. Minutes. I'm writing questions down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it was really. The, it was really. I think what really took it over the top was seeing that high number. Yeah, I'm not thirty years old yet. Yeah, just had my child, and I'm thinking to myself, how can I be around for my child if I die? You know, yeah. I'm breaking the unwritten rule I got with the homies and stuff. Right, so, right. That's what really, really, really motivated me seeing that number and just having her and just and have seeing those real experiences. I think a lot of people don't take health serious or whatever serious because they haven't experienced it firsthand. I tell you what, I hadn't seen anybody really have a stroke, but I can see the effects of it. Mm-hmm. You know, some are some are more severe than others. And, you know, not to put names out, but I remember to your point and loosely to your point, I remember looking at. Uh, Sinbad and he was doing mm. a, a skit about a stroke and all yeah. this and then he, then he ended up having one right and for me like it's almost like that's almost how do I say it maybe where my mental is right it's not that it's a joke but it's something to your point loosely like I said where you just don't take it seriously mm-hmm. right but when I saw that episode and then he actually came back and he talked about it yeah, right after yeah, he had the stroke that. right right so when I saw that, that made it real. And when you say that 144, I'm usually 144 when I first walk into the doctor's office, like 144 over 89 or something like that. So the lower number is decent. The upper number is a little high. Um, and then they say, sit down and we'll retest you. And then it goes to like 120 something, right? So mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so I haven't had the, the medicine, but seeing the effects of stroke and knowing those numbers kind of are indicators, right? Mm-hmm of the potential it leads me to want to reach out to my friend blackamore <laughs> to find out what i can do you know preemptively to to mitigate those type of um you know risk factors in my mm. life so thank you like i said earlier <laughs> in the green room thank you for coming on the show <laughs> and, and talking about your journey because you're you're walking the walk right now i do want to talk about the 60 60 pounds in 60 days it's like I well, I didn't say it on here yet, but <laughs> <laughs> like I was thinking, I'll tell you yeah. like that. Like that seems a little a little aggressive, mm-hmm. right? Now I hear you say you took a three day uh, water diet when you studied, mm-hmm. and then you went sixty days, sixty pounds lost. Can you describe some of the key principles that you followed during your weight loss journey? Yeah, so. First and of all, I said, I, and, and to your point, I said a lot of words, a long, a long question long, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the, um, first, first things first, I had made a decision and I, I say that word, you know, on purpose because there's a difference between a choice and a decision, a choice, you got options, a decision is yeah. you cut off any other option and say this is going to happen or i'm gonna die first one of the two mm. so i made a decision to get my health right and at because at this time when i was trying to when i when i seen my blood pressure was that high i didn't really care about my weight it didn't it didn't even connect to my no. brain it was the blood pressure i wanted to get down the yeah. weight loss was a side effect okay. and so in my mind i said okay i'm just i'm gonna eat this way the way that i've studied and hopefully within the next year it'll at least drop 10 or 20 points. I thought, because it took me this long to get here, I thought it was going to take some years for it to come down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, I go into the fast, I'm studying. <clears throat> and the conclusions that I'm coming to, because I knew I had to be honest, I couldn't, uh, you know, like be biased and only take the information I wanted to, because that's what I tried for the past five years. I tried to do like the keto. I tried these. Yeah all these crazy extreme diets and stuff like that. And the diet choice seems extreme to people that I concluded on, which was going vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to see that. I didn't want that to happen. I like yeah, nachos. Uh huh. I like nachos. I, I like, uh, I like burgers. I like ice cream and I mm-hmm. had to give these things up. Mm-hmm. That was tough for me, <laughs> but you know, I had to do yeah. what I had to do. So the main principle was, Taking it one, I took everything one moment at a time. Mm. I, I think a big mistake people make when it's time, when, when, when any goal, it could apply outside of weight loss or whatever. We look at like the big picture of what you got to mm-hmm. do for the rest of your life. I was just yeah. like, let me just see if I can make the most healthy breakfast I can. 
I'm just going to worry about breakfast. If I could have a guilt-free breakfast, that's going to be a win. And then it was, let me see if I can make, okay, I did breakfast. That was a, that was a win. Let me see if I could do lunch. Then I do that. Well, let me see if I could do dinner. Let me see if I can mm-hmm. do breakfast again the next day. And I just kept, even to this day, I just take it one moment at a time. Yeah. And also, I think another thing that's key <clears throat> is if I knew I was about to go to like a barbecue or something and eat food and there was food there that I wasn't trying to eat anymore. Right. Before I left the house, I would literally go into like a meditation and just mm. practice saying no. <laughs> mm, yeah. I would imagine like being offered, hey, you want some pop? Hey, you want some ice cream? And I would just practice saying, Ooh. no, I'm okay. I'm good. I don't need that. I'm not eating that. And I think that was probably really key. And I, and I practiced that with everything today, too. Yeah. The, like These principles, it's big, it's, it could apply to any area of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think re- really practicing that in that meditation and, and focusing on changing who yeah. I was as a person as opposed to just trying to do something. Because in order to do something, you have to, in order to do something and it feel effortless and you're not trying to be disciplined, you have to change who you are fundamentally. And that's what I've really focused on. That's awesome. Meditation, I hear that a lot, uh, just getting your mind right. And and like you said, that can apply in a lot of different facets of your life. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be you go in a room and, um, I mean, right. that that works, right? But mm-hmm. just getting your mind right uh, to, to, to go into the, <laughs> good Lord, the belly of the beast. You're talking about going to, to, to a barbecue. Yeah. That's, that's, and then moment by moment, like that's a key key mm-hmm. thing, right? Instead of looking at the big picture, let's, here's the plan. Here's the steps that I got to take and focus on the steps. Don't focus mm-hmm. on the, the journey. So that's awesome. And then something that was really key that I like what you said, you decided, um, you decided you didn't have a choice, right? You eliminated all the other options and it, this is the choice that I'm, mm-hmm. you know, this is the, what I'm deciding to do. Mm-hmm. Like that, I was just listening to this, to this audio book and they were talking about a lot of different things that we do. And when you are inundated with a ton of options, it makes it difficult. And this seems simple, right? To make a choice. But in this day and age, we have a plethora of places where we can get data and we can get information and we can get bogged down with trying to make the right decision. Right. Um, So by you eliminating a lot of those things and just saying, Hey, this is, this is the path that I'm going on. Like that's, that's an important step. That's an important approach uh, to many things. Right. Yeah. So I appreciate that as well. Um, you also talked about your family's health history, right? Mm-hmm. Did that influence you any bit? Cause a lot of that stuff is hereditary, especially with black people, right? We have a, the high blood pressure and, you know, things like that. Diabetes. Uh, did that influence you as you started doing your learning and started researching about it? Well, yeah. Well, when I started learning and researching about it, I learned how, because remember I said earlier, I had the mindset of your disease is pretty much uh, predetermined. predetermined and stuff. Yeah. Like, and I realized that's well, not the case. And yeah. the reason why it seems hereditary is because the habits that's passed down. That's cool. Uh, so, so, so that's really what it is. And, but also in the body, the human body is really, is really, really cool. Um, do you know why high blood pressure seems to run a little higher in black people than other races of people in America? I think I have an answer, but I want to hear the truth. <laughs> now, this, I'm not, <laughs> this, this is the only factor, but this is a, a contributing factor. Okay. We, we go back a few hundred years ago when they was bringing us over in the boats. Yep. Um, That's what I was... Yeah, they were, they were like, they would lick our foreheads. And if it tasted salty, that means that our ancestors was expelling like too much sodium and they likely didn't have the biological resilience to make the voyage. It was those mm. of us who our body, because having high blood pressure is really our body attempting to hydrate itself because mm-hmm. it doesn't have all the hydration and electrolytes. So when you think about it, it any, any disease, even like fat, like body fat, body yeah. fat is your body's attempt to keep you alive because it produces the fat to insulate the toxins so it don't get in your bloodstream and kill you. Mm. So fat coming on the body, it's a healthy response, but it's an indicator that you're doing unhealthy things. Uh, having high blood pressure is a healthy response, but it's an indicator that you're doing unhealthy things. Your body thinks that you're malnourished, not getting the electrolytes. And so the key to it is reminded that it lives in abundance. There's plenty of water, there's plenty of fruit plenty yeah. of sunlight just reminded that and, and, and so um 
I forgot exactly which question of yours I was answering because I kind of went over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I think you asked. Uh, I was what, family's influence. Family, yeah, 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 yeah. So it really that inspired me, and I really wanted to be an example at that point because it's like, oh, my family. We kind of. I'm sure I wasn't the, the only one in the family thinking like that. I could show them that mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be this way, and I could right. be. I could be living proof and. Would you know, the first Thanksgiving or two, I got teased and say, oh, you want your lettuce? You want this? Ah, ha, ha. We're going to enjoy this <laughs> macaroni and cheese. But then, like, like they seen the weight come up. They seen yeah. the transformation. Then we had a vegan Thanksgiving one year. And that wow. was that was like, crazy to me. So, yeah, it was, it was a, a, a huge inspiration because it was like, we don't have to live like this. Oh, and for the record, I did not have that answer. <laughs> <But you did. laughs> I just want to put that out there. That's that's really good. I mean, that's a good, you know, because a lot of a lot of times, and this is another good lesson, we look at symptoms, right? Mm-hmm. And we're not looking at the real root or the cause of a thing, right? Mm-hmm. It can be health, it can be finances, it can be relationships, it can be whatever. We focus on the symptoms, and we try to throw medication, we try to throw money at, we try to throw all these different things at a symptom instead of really digging mm-hmm. deep and getting to what the real cause is so that that is in a if nothing else like we we won right there that is an important <laughs> lesson yeah uh, for that Definitely. one i appreciate that hey so what was the most challenging part of your journey and and how did you overcome that and and, and maybe for me it would have been attending too many barbecues you know <laughs> what i mean because i walk my dog every morning and in in sometimes in the afternoon well every afternoon as well but sometimes in the afternoon I walk past houses and they got the barbecue, you know, going, mm. they're grilling on the, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, oh, I wish I was that person's friend. Right. <laughs> so I can't go over. So you're actually, you're actually there. Right. And you meditate and you go in and you get your mind right. You do your thing. Um, so I would think that is the most difficult to overcome. What was your most difficult thing and how did you overcome that? It was really just the, the, the social, I don't want to say isolation, but you kind of feel a little isolated because everybody, mm. like, first of all, going vegan, I make myself, like, part of, like, 3% of the population. <laughs> and then even within the 3% of the population, 90% of them only last a year or two. So I don't have a much of yeah. a, you know, a social uh, foundation there. So yeah. it, it was really just, just socially was a, probably the hardest part. As far as, like, sticking to it, it wasn't as hard as I thought. But mm. then again, if we zoom out, like I said, from previous five years, it was very hard. So maybe right, I finally right. built the muscle. I don't know. Because it seemed yeah. instant that day when I told you when it was 170 over 100 something, it yeah. seemed like a switch hit. But prior to that, it was a struggle. But right. after that, I think it's really just socially and dealing with ignorance. And I'm not saying ignorance in a malicious way. We just, a lot of us no, just don't know, know anybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and then it's interesting because... You know, some people who may visibly need the education and information will like argue. For some reason, when you say vegan, it defends some people even, you know, and mm. <laughs> they're like, no, you need your protein, you need this. Yeah. Need this. So uh, no, uh, that I was know. probably the most, that could be frustrating. And also, um, you know, just seeing people like put the poison in their body. Now that you have a new perspective on the food and you know what they're eating now and you want to help them, but you don't yeah. want to impose and come yeah, off yeah, as yeah. this pushy person. That's why I, that's part of the reason why I do what I do now. Like, okay, I don't have to be in everybody's face, but I can talk on my own social media stuff. And if they come to me, they come to me. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, because they they must want to hear it. But that's I won't. That's how to do it. Yeah. So that's how that's that's how I remedy that. Okay. Yeah. Be, you know, I don't care either way. Right. However you want to eat is however you want to eat. But I have heard that you know vegans. And I guess like any other thing, like they come off as being elitist in a sort of yeah. way, right? You know, my and way I was is better than your way. Being honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that's why that's that standoffish, you know, yeah. a little bit because you've learned a new thing and you want the people who mm-hmm. you surround yourself with to be as healthy as you are. But just like that 170 over 110 or whatever the, the mm-hmm. bottom number was, it took that moment for it to click in you. And it mm-hmm. takes a moment yeah. to click in yeah. them, right? And, and so anyway, I just wanted to to, to kind of convey that. You know what I mean? Everyone has to get to that point when they get mm-hmm. to that point, and then they'll be open. So Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What lifestyle changes did you implement to support? Do you go work out every day? You go run 10 miles, marathons? Uh, uh, <clears throat> I know um, you're a vegan, so that's yeah. one, but go ahead. 
Uh, I hate running. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't like running on the. Tra- I don't like running long distance. I don't mind sprinting, yeah. and that's so that's what I do. Okay. I, I, I try to sprint full speed at least once a week. You know, there's a statistic that says ninety five percent of people after the age thirty will never run full speed again. Mm mm. I used to play. I used to. I play basketball up until I ruptured my Achilles. Ever since then, I stopped most sports that require running. If I try to run and sprint right now, I'll pull my hamstring <laughs> in the back. <laughs> like I'll run across the street with my dog. It's like a street and I feel it pulling because I'm not stretching. So I definitely wholeheartedly agree with uh, that assessment. Yeah. yeah. It, it's bad though. Go yeah. Ahead. And, and, and that, co- and that too comes from uh lack of knowledge, which is somewhat kind of new to me again. There you uh, go. I, st- I started some with knowledge. The- yeah, I came with I came in with the nutrition thing. Okay, cool. I didn't have a, a much of appreciation for exercise yet. When I yeah. would post my before and afters and stuff like that, and I would just I would just um you know do consultations for meal plans on how to eat. Mm-hmm. I would like exercise, just like do push ups and pull ups and stuff like that, but nothing crazy. And yeah. I, but I but number one question I was always, I would always get was do I do personal training? And for years I would say no because I didn't and I didn't know what I didn't know, mm-hmm. and. After a while, I said, well, since this is such an in-demand thing, let me see if I can know what I don't know, stuff like that. And I remember I had messed up my knee mm. so bad I couldn't I couldn't walk. I couldn't even really stand up for a couple of days. I couldn't walk for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even try to run full speed or nothing like that for years. I felt like my leg would have broken in half or something. I yeah. had to walk down the stairs going sideways mm. and stuff, <laughs> stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I, but I started learning exercise and learning how I could like kind of rebuild that tissue and strengthen the VMO muscle above the knee and get that back. I applied that for a few months. My, I could walk down the stairs forward again. I mm-hmm. said, well, dang. So I kept training it. And then I learned like where the knee injury comes from is usually something with actually your hip or your ankle and not the knee itself. It's just misaligned right. somewhere. Right, and I started right. doing those stretches and things like that. And then I ran full speed without pain and I didn't hurt the next day. And nice. I remember this is not too long ago. It was some NBA game. Some some guy, 40s or 50s, he went, He one of the fans in the crowd and they had him come out there. You know, at halftime, they like see if he can make a basket, and you win ten thousand dollars or something like that. Okay. He went. He went out there to shoot the basketball and tore his Achilles right there, right out there. And <laughs> so I have this phobia of like not wanting to tear mine, just doing something normal. So now I try to train him like every other day to yeah. to keep that. You know, and just real quick, just something as simple as deep calf raises. Uh, could, could, could help with that with a deep stretch at the bottom, but you want to strengthen it too. One thing we do a lot, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk about the importance of stretching, but if you don't contract too, you can actually yeah. make your muscle weaker. So like if you, if you, let's say you, uh, you stretch your chest like this, that's cool, mm-hmm. but do something to contract it too. Kind so of put it in, yeah. Yeah, to, to, to bring it all together. Um, and, I, and the way I like to look at it, we're both food and exercise. Is and I don't know what everybody's belief is. If you believe in God or if you're atheist, or whatever you want to subscribe to, whatever that mm-hmm. entity is, right? Movement. When you move and you stay active, you are communicating to your creator or whatever you call them that you are still doing things on planet Earth and you like being here and you are still on the mission. You're doing stuff. When yeah, you yeah. Eat actual food. You're communicating that you're enjoying your time here. You have a purpose and all of that. When you start poisoning your body and you just sit and chill and watch a Netflix, you are mm. communicating that I, I'm not, I'm not really doing nothing here. It's not what give you muscles for what? You're not moving them. You're sitting on the couch. Mm. Okay, well since you're not really doing anything on planet Earth, you're not really fulfilling any purpose. Let's speed this process up to get you out of here to get some new life. Let's go ahead. Here's the cancer so you can get on up out of here. Here's the high blood pressure. Let's speed this up instead of wow. having them be here because they're not making use of their time. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. most fundamental way I could tell somebody how to look at health or disease because even philosophically, disease is defined as uh, the state of prolonged dysfunctional behavior that, present, that prevents ease of function. And when you look hmm. at it like that, diabetes, blood pressure, all that becomes the effect of the disease and not the disease itself. Even... There's because there's even situations people who eat well, they exercise and all of that, but they'll still develop a cancer. 
And in yeah. my experience, I don't have like science or anything to back this up. So this is a belief. But people that I get to know that have these issues and they do everything else right, usually they're holding on to some secret or they're harboring some very intense emotion or some or something like that. And they're not being, they're living mm. like a lie almost and not taking accountability for something or things like that. Mm. So this thing is very holistic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. holistic and it's emotion, it's energy and motion. Like, yeah, emotion is energy. There's some energy and motion in your body, and it's your body wants to tell the truth, <laughs> you know, and we can't, yeah. we can't escape it. Wow, wow, so. I took a lot out of that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 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 awesome. Um, I do like that you gave the definition of disease. And I, 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 so like now I'm, I'm in my fifties and when things start to happen, I just say, well, I guess it's time to pay the piper, <laughs> right? <laughs> of all the abuse of all the foods that, you know, unhealthy things and choices and stuff like that over the years, now it's time to pay the piper, right? So you can, you can, you can wallow in that, but you can, mm. you can also have an empowerment in that. Okay. Now I have to pay, but I still can do these things to kind of mitigate you know, that downward slide or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. But the subscribing, (laughs) whether you're atheist and, or you believe in God, like that is a strong, strong mental picture. Like get off the, (laughs) I love Netflix by the way. Um, (laughs) But I was like, but damn it, Blackamore, I still go out and I walk my dog every day. So I'm, so I'm moving. Right. (laughs) Um, But, and then you have to sit back and think, well, what is my purpose for being here, right? Your purpose or your your goal was your daughter, right? Overall, your your goal is your. Um, maybe I like saying this because you know how you learn new things. Um, <laughs> I was I finally read, and this is my my long story long. <laughs> the uh, the uh, the ac- the alchemist. Have you read that the book? book? Uh, yeah. No, I, I attempted to read it. I didn't end up finishing it. It didn't. It didn't hit me the way it hit the rest of the world. And I feel like I'm missing out. And what I need you to do is listen to the audiobook in your okay. in your time when you're doing something, working out or whatever. Just like that's what I did because I was driving. So I said, all right, this is an opportunity for me to listen to this book. And the, the one of the big things is 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 having that personal what do they call it personal legend, right? That thing that you are meant to do, mm-hmm. like you were meant. You're here for your daughter, but your personal legend is to promote healthy living, right? To as many people as can accept it. Mm-hmm. That's your personal legend. That's what you're investing your time in. And as you, oh, that's your phone. No, that's my... oh, <laughs> dang, I hope you can hear it. My bad. <laughs> I'm looking around like I thought I silenced you. No, no. But it was saying how when you when you want to do a thing or when you prescribe to do a thing, right? Mm-hmm. The universe conspires to help you to achieve those things, right? It helps you. It conspires to help you do your personal legend. Mm-hmm. So, for me, just listening to you, hearing your stories, looking at your family, um, how you approached it. The aha moments. All of these are great lessons, right? And I and I, and I keep reiterating because they're great lessons for anyone to hear. Now we may not subscribe in the Alchemist. It may not be a great book. We may not subscribe to being a believer in God. Um, but all of these lessons that you're talking about are the lessons. Let's focus on the the um, what do you call it? The problem and not the symptoms. If y'all knew me eight years ago or yeah. earlier, y'all would not mm. believe I'm the same person. I don't believe I'm the same. I'm so much not the same person. I started going by a different name. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's, uh, I was, it, <laughs> I used to like brag about like just doing unhealthy things. I, I they called me little yeah. garbage disposal because I would just eat anything. You know, if, mm. like, are you gonna eat that? Are you gonna eat that? Like that was me. I was right. had a reputation for just being this greedy, eat whatever person. And for most of my life, I or seemingly it didn't have any consequences. It didn't hit me until my twenties. Then that's yeah. when I started pulling on the weight, and my health started to decline and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I did a complete one eighty. It's probably why. Probably another reason why I'm so. Uh, I guess passionate and loud with it now to undo all my wrongs. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love for, it for the previous years. But yeah, complete, complete, complete one eighty. Okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> so, how has your weight loss and improved health um, 
affected your your professional life? Uh, this and this is another reason why I won't shut up about it too. I'm mm-hmm. still. So I don't know if you went on my Instagram and you seen the picture where I'm wearing all black and I'm smiling like this. <laughs> That's in Atlanta. I just got to Atlanta that day because we was having a family reunion. Uh-huh, and that was uh-huh. also the, and that and that was also like the first day I was able to resist food and not feel any. Oh yeah. man, I kind of want something though. Like I turned down macaroni and cheese, no problem. That was the real win for me, right? Mm. Um, but. That day was the day I found out my blood pressure was at normal levels. And that was like the six, the day where I got on a scale and I was 211. I said, dang, I lost like 60 pounds in 60 days. That's, that's crazy. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why I, that's why I left that picture up. Um, what was, what was the original, what was the original question? So how, how does it help you in uh, professionally? Oh yeah. Cause I said I was high. Yeah. I'm still yeah, yeah. living off of that same high today. Yeah. Like, I haven't done any drugs for real, so I don't know, but I would like to imagine anybody mm. who maybe listen who's done in drugs and the first time and you want everybody else to feel it because it felt so great. That's right. how I still feel right now. Uh, honestly, it, 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 like, it kind of feels like I got like a second chance at life even. Mm. Um, and like clarity of mind, I, I feel like I tapped into like more spiritual or metaphysical, whatever terms we want to use. It's something deeper than what we just see in the physical on planet Earth. Right. Because I wasn't, I mean, yeah, I made that decision to do it, but you know, there's still that part of me that was like, this probably ain't going to work. Why would it? I've been failing the past five, mm-hmm. the past five years. What's going to be so different this time? Right. So for it to like finally pay off and it's like, dang. So y'all got to, and then I, I look around, I see other people, who don't seem as happy as me. And it's like, yo, you could be happy. Try this. I'm telling you, just put the work <laughs> in. It's going to be hard. But that, that yeah. that's how it really changed for me. I'm still high seven and plus years later off okay. of that day. And excuse me. And what, and, and what ways has your journey influenced your approach to, to like mentoring others? So you're, you're on a high now. So how, how does that affect your mentoring others to do this? Uh, it could be, it could be it could be frustrating sometimes, mm-hmm. you, you know. <laughs> you learn. I learned a lot about people. I learned how. I don't know. Well, I I try to keep it clean because I don't know if we could cuss on this show. But a lot of people, mm-hmm. we uh we BS ourselves. We come with a lot of with a, with a lot of excuses, mm-hmm. and we so good at it we don't even realize that we're doing it. And I think we yeah. all do this in different areas. I know there's areas in my life where I'm doing it as well. I just got the health part down. Like mm-hmm. well, my life ain't mm-hmm. perfect in all areas. And, but I really, you know, to see, to see (laughs) how common a human brain could be at coming up with an excuse of why we can't do something and how common it is and how, and we'll believe it. We'll believe our own because nobody can lie to you like you, because you know, you, you are you, uh, just to give a quick example, kind of related, but not, not all related, but still kind of related. When I was first trying to lose weight, I would like get like, uh, Let's say like a bag of Doritos or something. And I know I shouldn't yeah. be having these Doritos. And then I and it, this would make sense to me. I would say, if I eat that whole bag tonight, I ain't gotta worry about it tomorrow. Mm. That's really stupid logic. <laughs> but I believed it. And I would eat the bag, think I'm doing myself a favor. What I do the next day? I buy another bag. If I'd have just oh. had a serving or just a couple like yeah. I planned on, it wouldn't have been that crazy. So I go right. from taking a week to eat one bag to eating seven bags within a seven day week. Oh Um, my goodness. (laughs) So, but, but yeah, it's, it's, there there are those who kind of, who who do see the light and that's very, very rewarding. And I'm happy to see that. My laptop Mm -hmm. is about to die. So I'm about to plug the charger in, but um, that is very, very rewarding to see. But to, when sometimes you, it seems like you can't get through to people, it could be frustrating. And that's inspired me to kind of just learn more about psychology and things like that. Yeah. Because even over these past seven years, it was things I didn't realize. So my first, hold on, let me plug this in right now because I can just do it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We're back. Mm-hmm. So my first year of coaching, half the people got results, the other half didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of obsessive and a perfectionist. So I'm like, okay, how come only half of the people are getting the results and the other half ain't? What's the difference? Right. 
And that's when I really went back on my own journey and said, okay, now what, what was different for me? And what did I even have in common with those who got the success? Well, most of the people who got the success with me, they was fresh out of the ER or, you know, something mm. serious. They had, and then the other ones who didn't get the success, <clears throat> you know, they just want to lose 20 pounds. They just want to look better for the summer. It wasn't a deep enough why. Right. And it was that mixed with, and I also believe like practicing living my life before I stepped outside, like I said earlier, has a lot to do mm -hmm. with it. And even since I started implementing that with people, that's made a, a, a huge, a huge difference, a huge change. So. Okay. Just learning the psychology and what really led. So then it was like, okay, what did what did lead to me eating crazy like that anyway? Well, right. I was moving all around. My life kept changing. I was rich one day. I was about to be under a bridge the next day. That's stressful. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's a lot yeah. going on. Um, right. Even when I talk with people, a consistent thing I hear is, you know, I was on track, but then, you know, this crazy thing happened or this person died or this whatever. And I went into this depression and I did that. And then even as I'm studying foods and how it affects the neurochemistry and all the dopamine is produced, I mm -hmm. said, oh, what's happening is we're all a bunch of drug addicts. We call it food, mm -hmm. but literally 73% of what we eat isn't actual food. It's ultra processed drugs. And, you know, uh, doing crack is shunned in society, but eating a Twinkie ain't, <laughs> you know. I know. I know. <laughs> so, you know, because you, you can't go in the garden and grow a, a cookie. You can't grow chips in the garden. That's not, that's yeah. not food. We're making it right. in the lab, j just, like they, just like they whip up the crack yeah. with the baking soda. They're whipping up the high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that. We're yeah, all yeah. a bunch of drug addicts. It's no wonder okay. why... The three day water fast kind of helped because you know that's what you do. Like when you're on drugs, you, they put you in that room, they lock you in the bed, and you have these withdrawals. I almost feel like that. Everybody, every client I've done that with, and we do it the right way, hundred percent success rate. Mm. You don't tend to, and this is why one of the worst things people can do is you know they be like, okay, I'm about to lose some weight, I'm about to start this diet. Let me have this last messed up meal before I get started. Yeah. You wouldn't say if you, if you try to get somebody off a crack, you wouldn't say go ahead get this last rock because it's gonna be no. You, you do it ASAP. You, you That's one of the worst things over. you can do. Yeah, yeah. Um. So realizing how we'll be seventy three percent of what we call and that's a real number seventy three percent of what we call food is drugs, mm. <clears throat> and how our emotions precipitate our appetite. That's mm. been very illuminating to me. It made me change my whole approach to it all. It's, you could Google a meal plan. You could Google a workout plan. If it was that simple, we wouldn't have had this problem. Right. What's really going on is we've all been through some things and we don't know how to cope and we have self-medicate with food because yeah. that's the most acceptable way to self-medicate in society. I like it. I like it. All right. So I asked you a few questions. And now I don't know if I touched on what you want to talk about. Um, so, <laughs> so no, because I wanted to learn about these things and you've given me a lot of, a lot of things to contemplate, right? A lot of uh, decisions and choices to either make or eliminate those choices and just make a decision. So I mm -hmm. appreciate that. But, um, let's take a moment right now. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like to talk about? Ooh, uh, Lee, I could talk a lot. <laughs> And... I, I told you I watched you on YouTube. <laughs> I, t I told you that. <laughs> I can talk a whole lot. Uh, but um, that we want to talk maybe um, more about like the mental and meditation and things like that. Because yeah. I don't know. I believe that is probably one of the most underrated things. So here's the thing. <clears throat> There's a lot of mental tools that we're even aware of like there's a difference because hmm. there's a difference between becoming aware of something and actually learning something we live in an information mm -hmm. age we shouldn't yeah. have all these problems with all these information now we just became aware of a lot of things but we ain't practicing it and really downloading it to our subconscious right. and just like there is exercises you could do for the body to get the body in better shape like if you want to lose weight if you go running after a while you'll start to lose weight but mm -hmm. if you only did it for a week, you probably don't expect to lose a lot of weight. How, how could you? you only did it for a week? If you stay consistent at it, you'll lose weight over time. You'll have all these benefits. Yeah. They are simple mental tools. Some of us are aware of even some as simple as journaling or taking 10 minutes to just breathe. Mm. But we'll be hyped. We'll do it for like a week and then we'll stop and we don't yeah. stay consistent. A lot of us are mentally out of shape. And this is why when we when we encounter these 
events in our life that could be stressful. We break down, we get depressed so easily and we want to give up so easily because we are mentally out of shape. Our brain is like the super overweight person with diabetes and high blood pressure. They can't handle anything. You know, right. you try to walk up a flight of stairs and they cuffing and puffing before they get a third of the way up. That's how our brain is. But yeah. there are brain, there are meditation, journaling, self-talk, visualization, all Because like I said, I would practice like saying no in my mind. I was, I didn't know at the time necessarily what I was doing, but that was like a mental exercise. It's like my brain right. doing push-ups or sit-ups or squats and stuff like that. You okay. can do that for your brain as well. And if people just took 10, it take about an hour a day, three to four days a week to train the body. It only take 10, 15 minutes a day to train the mind, to have a very right. resilient mind, very resilient. Mm. Mm. And if we focus on that, everything else could follow. Mental resiliency. I like it. Okay. Hey, so thanks. Where can people, where can the listeners learn more about you or reach out to you? Uh, you could just go to blackamore.com or find Blackamore on whatever your favorite favorite uh, platforms are. B L A Q A M O R E. Um, yeah, you can find me whatever your favorite platform. I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm anywhere you want to be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and that's a pretty unique name, so uh, you should get right right to Blackamore <laughs> on there. <laughs> hey. Hey, but thank you, Blackamore, for sharing your incredible journey and insights with, with me today. Uh, your story is truly inspiring and offers valuable lessons on health and resilience, especially that mental resilience. That's, that's money right there. Uh, and to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. We hope Blackmore's experience has provided you with the motivation and actionable steps towards a healthier lifestyle. Stay tuned for more insightful episodes on Hindsight the Podcast. Thanks again, Blackamore. Right, thank you for having me. All right. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button? No, no, not right there. Over to the right. To, no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones.